All right, let's talk some Los Angeles Chargers losing to the Houston Texans, which was a surprise. And uh, listen, I've already kind of talked about the Davis Mills of it all. I made a video about that. You can check that out. Uh, so, you know, in doing so, I also kind of talked about the Charger defense, of course. I wanted to go to the flip side as well and say, what happened with this Chargers offense? And on one hand, the actual numbers aren't horrible in this one. Like, the Chargers still ended up with 29 points, uh, you know, only 10 possessions. So, 2.9 points per uh, possession is that's actually pretty good uh, that would be best in football if he did it consistently uh, in one of those possessions they only had the ball for one play it was you know just to run out the clock so uh, I think you could certainly make an argument that this was actually a fine performance however when you're the third best offense in terms of points per drive and you're playing the fifth worst defense in terms of points per drive I think they kind of expect a little bit better than uh, even 2.9 points per drive, uh, and I also think that it's worth mentioning one of these touchdowns was kind of in garbage time, and they threw a pick six, so how much do we really want to say this offense did what we expect it to do? Um, I guess the main thing is, this wasn't a horrible offensive performance, but there were some issues. I want to talk about those issues, so let's get into it. So, like, let's start off with something like this. This is a good example of, really, I mean, they could have used a, a, a you know, more options besides Keenan Allen, I guess, is the best way to say this. I think that the loss of Mike Williams really did hurt them. Uh, and you're going to see it on something like this, where this is the concept that can beat cover two zone, which is what they're going up against. The Texans are disguising, but, you know, they like to play a lot of cover two zone. That's their quote unquote base coverage, obviously. Uh, you know, other than Seattle, no team really has a base coverage in the NFL these days, but teams will have coverages they play more frequently, even like Seattle doesn't necessarily uh, play cover three all the time. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's get back to this play and watch how right when this play begins, what you're going to see is that there is an opening. It's not wide open, but there is a chance for Herbert to make this throw. It's going to be tough, but there is an opportunity. There's a window. This is a possible play to make, and we've certainly seen Herbert make these plays before. However, as you see, this throw is going to be maybe a bit high. Jared Cook can't make the catch. And I guess my main thing is Mike Williams probably makes that catch. So that's kind of my point is that when Keenan Allen's the only guy you have to really account for as a defense, even the Texans defense, it's easier to account for that. So that is a big way that the Chargers struggled in a lot of ways. This is why we kind of talk about it's not always who's your best option. Sometimes it's who's your second or often even your third best option. And that's something that, you know, that is an issue that the Chargers have uh, is those extra options. Although, again, missing Mike Williams, of course, uh, you know, th that definitely uh, th that hurt things. He also won't be available for week 17. So, again, at least in the short term, uh, there's some there's some concerns there, I think. Like, this plays another example. This is kind of just football 101 a little bit of, you're going to see, there's the Texans are showing a cover two, but they're going to disguise it into cover three, meaning that towards the sidelines, you could have uh, opportunities for this to work. Uh, you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. So Justin Herbert is going to take it, which is what you should do in this situation. He's making the correct read. This is the route you want to throw to. And as you see, this is Jason Moore. That's the receiver who's barely played in the NFL. And he actually looked like he might have been able to get open. I think if Herbert kind of leads him a little bit more, maybe he does get open. But the reality is, I mean, it's possibly just a, a chemistry thing more than anything when we're, you know, the guy that you're having in that situation is Jason Moore, who I don't want to sit here and like, you know, trash or anything. But he is a guy who, you know, has only had 163 snaps in his NFL career. He was a, you know, undrafted free agent from 2019. So he's not necessarily the guy you want in this situation. You'd much rather have Mike Williams. Although I also could say like, he also kind of got open a little bit. If that's a better throw from Herbert, maybe that's a touchdown. So it goes both ways. Herbert kind of, you know, tried to almost, you know, back shoulder it a little bit instead of just leading him deep towards the end zone. So Take your pick on who to blame, but the reality is that's just where they, they weren't hitting on that stuff in this game. And all right, let's even transition a little bit and talk about some other stuff, some issues just with Herbert in general. This play wasn't great. It's kind of a unique play, kind of an odd play, where it's going to be a cover two zone. And what you do is you have the receiver lined up to the offense's left, who's going to run all, you know deep and basically get the safety who's currently on the offense's left further to the left, get him towards the sideline. Then you have another receiver who runs over the middle. He could get open. This is a, a zone buster against cover two to get a big chunk play. That's what you're trying to do here, which, listen, I like these kind of plays. It's, you know, hard to win in the NFL if you can't get explosives. And when teams play cover two, it's harder to get explosives. So 
figure out a way to still get those explosives even when teams are playing cover too. And watch how when Herbert takes the snap, he's going to run this play action. And as you see right here, you can kind of see how this is working. There is an opening underneath for this to be open. Of course, the issue is that how do you actually make this throw? Where do you actually put the ball? If you've already thrown the ball, then it's, you know, it's in a good spot, but you haven't. You have to make this throw now. There's a couple of ways you could throw this to try and hit Josh Palmer. That's number five. That's the guy uh, Herbert is going to try and throw to. You could just try to throw a line drive and hit him, you know, sort of over the middle. You also could throw the ball deep and hope that you get him towards the back of the end zone, maybe even throw it, you know, lead him a little bit closer towards the uh, you know, left side of the field. Both are understandable options, but you have to be on the same page if you're a receiver here. Herbert kind of just throws it right at him, which allows for a defensive back to jump in front and get the interception there. So not great, right? Not ideal, not what you want to have happen. Understandable given the circumstances. It was a good defensive play as well. So you can tip your cap as well, all that stuff. But still, a mistake for sure. There were some mistakes by Herbert. I'm not saying he was the problem. I really don't think he was, but there were some mistakes and some things you can point your finger at him as well for. Like this play is going to be another interesting example of uh, really something that I think is, you know, this is kind of what gets him the most criticism is the pick six. It also totally wasn't his fault. Uh, what's going to happen here, maybe that's not fair to say, but it at least wasn't like a bad throw or bad read or anything. It was just a miscommunication. It's zone coverage. And quite frankly, the, the Chargers are just trying to get back into this game. Uh, you're down two scores in the fourth quarter. You're just trying to see what you can do. See if you can get back into the game. You have a check down underneath. So watch what happens. Look, Herbert takes the snap. His first read down the field, he doesn't love. So he'll just take the check down. Uh, simple thing to do. Can still gain some yards. Can still gain a, a first down. It's, it's a good play against this type of coverage. So I like it a lot. The issue is that him and his receiver just aren't going to be on the same page here. Look, Jared Cook stops and Herbert expected him to keep going, throws an interception. And we've seen a number of, we've seen, this isn't the first time there's been an interception like this. So Chargers have to clean that stuff up for sure. If you're going to make a, you know, just make the playoffs, let alone make a deep run in the postseason. But still, these are the kind of things that are a lot easier to clean up than say, you know, the first interception, which was a little bit different. So uh, not a huge deal in this one, but obviously you know, it's a pick six, so it doesn't look good. So yeah, that's kind of what I think about uh, this game is there's some issues, there were some mistakes. There was also some good, of course, uh, that absolutely happened. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can't be scoring, you know, 15 points into the fourth quarter and be expect against the Texans. That's not what you should be doing. You should be performing better. It was a d disappointing performance from the Chargers. But again, there's still a lot to like. I think people are overreacting a bit to this game a little bit. Every team has a bad loss this season. Literally every team has a loss that you say, yeah, yeah, that wasn't great. So I, I just don't get how you can really make a big deal out of the Chargers specific bad loss when every team has one. But again, that's just kind of how I feel about it. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this Chargers loss? Uh, always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.